So um, excited to be here. Seems like a really diverse uh, audience. Uh, hopefully the, the presentation today can uh, have something that each of you can take away as, as relevant or interesting and, and, and learn. Um, the goal is, is really a few things for me. First is let's talk about what's happening in the market uh, as it stands. This, this cloud thing is creating a lot of disruptions across businesses everywhere. Um, and, and let's look at the challenges that that is exposing from an IT perspective. Um, and then let's dial into storage a little bit more specifically and talk about the deficiencies in existing storage architectures when you're thinking about cloud and the problems of IT that can't be solved by traditional storage systems. So um, my, my, my higher level goal is a conversation. If there's confusion, if there's questions, concerns, just speak up, interrupt me, let's clarify things so everyone understands what we're talking about here. And hopefully uh, by the end, everyone comes away with a little bit, uh, something learning a little bit new. So let's get started. So enterprise IT is under significant pressure. That's a throwaway term, right? We've been hearing that for years. There's been this persistent drumbeat to do more with less. But the more constructive question to ask is why is there a sense of urgency around that today that hasn't necessarily existed previously? Why is there a transformation going on globally in enterprise IT that has a sense of urgency behind it that hasn't existed prior to now? You don't have to look very far to figure out why actually. And that's where the public cloud comes in. So the public cloud has set a very aggressive and transparent benchmark for how IT services are delivered. You turn on your phone, you get what you want, when you want it, dynamically, um, and it's automated. The benchmark is not just about price. This isn't just about cheap services. This is about agility. It's about efficiency. It's about self-service. It's about automation. Those expectations, the, the heightened pressure on IT is a direct result of the standard, the new standard for IT service delivery created by the public cloud. So if you dial into this and, and look at exactly what that means, it's about agility and it's about efficiency. Enterprises globally are looking across their entire business and saying, hey, how can I be more agile? How can I be more efficient? And they're auditing all of their operations and in that conversation, IT is as ripe a hunting ground as any to find more agility and find more efficiency. And if IT wants to maintain relevance in this conversation, they have to figure out how to, as Ben Capps put it, a, a, an analyst for diversity, deliver more for less and in far quicker time. And that's an imperative that they have to live up to to remain relevant in this conversation because cloud again has set a benchmark for what IT is and what IT efficiency is that everyone is being held accountable for. The answer to that is what we believe and we have referred to as the next generation data center. So the next generation data center is, it's a destination. Think of it as a vision. IT needs to evolve over time such that resources and the resulting applications and services delivered by IT are agile, scalable, automated, and guaranteed. In order for IT to keep up, they need to embrace these kind of properties to get out from under the pressures they face today. Interestingly, it's not just the properties or the priorities that are shifting, it's the conversations that are being had, the way that we're talking about these problems are shifting as well. This is a direct function of the fact that IT is facing and conversing about a very different set of problems than we've dealt with in the past. And if you compare on the left, the, the terminology and the conversations that we have in the legacy data center versus the right, it's a different set of problems imposed by the constraints that IT is up against, whether it be multiple tenants or multiple applications, mixed or shared workloads from a single infrastructure, uh, moving from dedicated siloed infrastructure for all your applications to shared infrastructure, being able to scale out versus silos of infrastructure all over your environment, capacity on demand when the business unit asks for it, not three days later. 
Everything is about software. Hardware is interchangeable parts. Everything needs to be software defined, independent of the underlying hardware. Self-service. If a department wants something, they should be able to go and get it. Just like when you want something, you download an app and you go and get it. Business units want the same thing and IT needs to be able to keep up. And it needs to be automated as well. It's not necessarily about swivel chair management and running back and forth and manually tuning everything in your IT infrastructure. Things need to be automated such that IT can be working on higher value things. The conversation across the board is changing from the legacy data center to what we're seeing now in the new data center. And probably the most interesting dynamic is that the tools are shifting also. So this agility and efficiency imperative that we alluded to on the last slide is not going to be addressed by the tools on the left. There's an English proverb that says necessity is the mother of all invention. Well, it has become necessary that there be invention up and down the infrastructure stack to address the challenges that enterprises are faced with today to be more agile, more efficient, more automated, more predictable. All these vendors you see here on the right are a reflection of that dynamic, a reflection of the invention required up and down the stack across technologies and across communities. In the database world, it's things like Cassandra and MongoDB around non-relational data stores and analytics. In the automation world, it's things like Puppet. In big data, it's Hadoop. In the orchestration automation layers, it's things like CloudStack and OpenStack that may not have made it their way into your conversations yet on a daily basis, but these are tools that have ripe, robust communities, vendors, and investments behind them to deliver new ways of managing, automating, um, and, and moving forward in your data center. At the networking layer, NYSERA, VMware paid $1 billion for NYSERA with, with about five customers, just to suggest the importance of network-based virtualization. Cumulus Networks, another networking vendor. The Open Compute Project, driving down standardization in hardware. See micro at the compute layer. And then as it comes to storage, certainly solid fire, and we believe that we're helping drive forward the next generation data center from a storage perspective. So diving into storage a bit here, um, the storage industry hasn't stood still in this conversation. Uh, the, the problem is though that, that just taking a, a traditional disk-based storage system as Tim was talking about and rejuvenating that, rejuvenating that with a flash um, design isn't really solving the problems we're talking about here. That's really just a band-aid on what is a legacy solution. It's just caffeinating a disk-based architecture with a flash-induced performance boost. That's not really solving the problems that IT is faced with here to be more dynamic, more efficient, more scalable. There's a bunch of other emerging flash vendors. Oop. Did it go? There's a bunch of other flash vendors who are taking flash as this, you know, super fast performance machine and then they're just wrapping around it what are fundamentally similar architectures of the recent past. But again, they are solving simply for performance, which is one piece of the equation. An enterprise has so many more problems around scalability, automation, efficiency, self-service, that can't simply be solved by performance, yet a lot of the innovation you see today is performance-centric. It's like I got this flash thing, it gets me a ton of IOPS, IAPs are cheap, I'm going to throw that at my problem. The challenge here is performance doesn't solve a lot of these problems. Performance alone. So that's where SolidFire comes in. At SolidFire, what we are trying to do is, you know, sure, we're going to bet on performance. We are enabled by Flash as much as the next guy. We take advantage of Flash arguably, arguably better than anyone in the industry. But flash in performance is a means to an end. Um, our system, our architecture was built to solve a much higher order set of problems. And these are the problems that IT is faced with on a daily basis. They have to deploy applications faster to keep the business units happy. They need to provide agile and scalable infrastructure to grow as the business needs to grow and not be a bottleneck to the business's growth. And they need to do it efficiently while reducing costs because that imperative isn't going away. And they need to do it in an automated, uh, in an enabling manner to the business, such that the business is the one that gets IT when they need it. Storage in that conversation has, has always failed to keep up. 
SolidFire was, was designed to solve these challenges that storage um, has proven inadequate in the, uh, in the next generation data center. So with that, I'm going to dive into SolidFire a bit. But before I do, I want to take a pause, see if there's any questions uh, on, the, on the cloud piece before we go a little bit deeper uh, on the technology. We good? All right. So who is SolidFire? This system you see here is a scale-out, high-performance storage system designed for large-scale infrastructure. Our founder came out of Rackspace. Inside Rackspace, he was trying to solve the problem of hosting lots of different applications that require predictable performance from a, sim from a shared infrastructure. Think of databases uh, next to virtual machines, next to virtual disks, all from a shared infrastructure. And Rackspace makes money on their computers. They have to figure out ways to be as profitable, as automated, as dense, as efficient as possible. And when you, the customer, the enterprise, say, hey, Rackspace, I need you to host my database app, that app needs to have the performance the customer expects, or it's a non-starter. Our founder, Dave, looked at EMC, he looked at NetApp, he looked at all the usual suspects to try and solve this problem. In fact, they looked at 14 different storage systems to address this issue. None of them could address the performance the cost, efficiency, automation imperatives that Rackspace was under to profitably offer storage as a service to their customers for performance sensitive applications. Dave left and founded Solid Funder Fire under that exact premise. To, to solve this problem, you have to clean slate the story from an architecture perspective. That's exactly what Solid Fire does. It's an all flash storage system, tremendous amounts of scale. It starts small and grows with your business up to 100 nodes. Suffice to say, that rolls up to 3.4 petabytes and 7.5 million IOPS. Massive capacity, but it grows linearly. You don't start at that point, you start small and grow as your business grows. It's all industry standard hardware. We do nothing innovative in the hardware besides package it up as an appliance to make it easily consumable for, for your business. And of course, because it's flash based, you get all the benefits of flash, but we've done a lot in software, and we'll talk through that a bit to drive the cost below Cost per, uh, cost per gig below uh, traditional spinning disk architectures. So from a, a feature set perspective, if, if, you're, if you're thinking about storage, if you're in the market for storage, this is the only slide I think that you need to remember from today. This is the one that you can take with you in every single vendor you talk to in a large scale IT infrastructure in evaluating storage, ask them about these five things. Because if you're building storage that needs to be agile, scalable, automated, efficient, right here, these are table stakes. In the next generation data center, your storage system needs to be able to do all of these things well. And so you can just take out this slide if you want and ask your vendor, do you scale out? Okay, do you scale management and performance? Can you guarantee performance for me for every single application that I put on this platform? Can you automate this entire management so that I don't have to manually provision and tune storage on a daily basis? Can you ensure high availability regardless of operating condition? And lastly, um, can you ensure that there's inline data reduction technologies to make this as economical as possible for, for a much wider set of application use cases? When people think of flash, they think of performance at any cost, they think super expensive, they think I don't have that problem. The truth is, if you can crack the code on the economics of flash through efficiency and automation, you open it up to a much wider set of use cases, and that spectrum is only getting wider. The economics of flash are coming down, just like the economics of disk came down before it to address things like archiving by way of data domain. Vendors like SolidFire driving down the economics of flash to widen further and further the use cases for flash. And the benefit is the customer around the predictability, lower latency, et cetera. So we'll dive into each of these. Um, I uh, will refrain from getting too deep on any one of these. But if anyone has any questions or wants to go deeper, I'm happy to try and answer the question. Or, or Chuck here uh, will stand up once you guys expose me as a fraud and uh, not technically deep. But we'll, we'll, we'll tackle that when we come to it. So the first thing to look for is, is a scale out architecture. The, conceptually, this is the ability to seamlessly add new units to the system as you grow. Our unit of scale is one of those bottom little one-use systems right there. 
That little system by itself is 174 terabytes and 375,000 IOPS. That's our largest base platform. The beauty of it, though, is you just grow as you need to, one U at a time. So each time you need to scale out this architecture, you just simply add one U. There's no downtime. There's no disruptive data migrations. All that stuff is handled in the background. New nodes are added as demand dictates. Performance and capacity that has been added is instantly available to all volumes in the cluster, and it's done without downtime. So you simply just keep adding one U as the business grows. There's no need to invest ahead of demand because you can simply grow on demand as you need to without any sort of disruption to your business. When you look at that industry-wide, this graph here, before I start putting things on it, shows you performance on the, on the top, on the uh, horizontal, vertical axis, and then capacity on the horizontal. Just to give you an idea of where others sit in the industry, there's a bunch of legacy vendors that I'm sure some of you use or are accustomed to, NetApp, EMC, Compellent, uh, even 3PAR, that have delivered capacity-centric solutions um, and, and have tried to solve for, for performance, but, but limited architecturally. There's also a bunch of other startups that we've talked about earlier in the presentation delivering performance-centric solutions, but they forgot about the capacity part and they forgot about the scale-out part which are two critical pieces of, of people's business. These applications need both performance and capacity, and customers want to know that when they buy something up front that they can scale and grow into it over time. With SolidFire, we didn't want to force customers to have to choose performance or capacity up front, and we didn't want to have to force an unnatural upgrade over time as a customer needed to scale out their business and scale out the resulting under the underlying infrastructure. Our system starts small in the bottom left corner with all those guys in gray and allows you to grow to 7.5 million IOPS and 3.4 petabytes if you need to. And the cool part is you can then provision out the performance and capacity per application. So you are shaping the infrastructure to the needs of the application. You're not backing the application into the suboptimal design of the infrastructure. This system is composable such that if an application needs a certain amount of performance and capacity, you dial it in to every application. It's servicing the needs of the application versus backing into the, the suboptimal design of the infrastructure. And I think that's really, it's an important point because traditional storage systems force you to make a decision off the bat. Do you want performance or do you want capacity? And they leave you stranded if over time you have to evolve the business or grow or you end up having to buy other systems. Questions on scale out? Uh, and that, well, in this space right here, it's 5U. So you can start there in that little picture that Tim has right up front of the 5U, and then grow as you need to. So this 1U is a unit of scale. Each of these is a self-contained appliance, and you just keep racking and stacking them as you need to grow. That fully configured system is 100 nodes, which is about two and a half racks of space. I'll show a picture in a second in terms of what the competition would have to do in the same sort of footprint. Yeah, yeah, great question. Um, so the heterogeneous environment, describe the environment. Do you mean just like different application yeah. types? And different storage uh, uh, hardware. Yeah, so I'll answer the hardware one first and then we'll get to the um, live with different applications in a sec. So these different platforms, um, the hardware is essentially all the same. The only difference is the drive, drive types underneath. And the software itself is backwards compatible. Today, you can't mix uh, node types. In our release coming up first half of this year, you can start with a 3010, add 6010s, add 9010s. The hardware is completely uh, backwards compatible because it's all software driven. So if you wanted to start small, you just start 3010s, add 6010s on top, you grow whatever dimension you want to. Um, up till now, there's been no mixed node support, but that's a, it's a critical part of our first release. Um, perfect setup for my next uh, slide is your next question. So how does this work in a heterogeneous environment? I have an application that needs a ton of performance sitting next to an application that doesn't need a lot of performance. How do I ensure that that application needs a ton, doesn't steal all the resources of the system and leave everyone else really upset because they're not getting any sort of performance? That problem is called the noisy neighbor problem. One guy is stealing all the resources at the expense of all others that run on the system. In an environment where quality of service matters, that's a non-starter. That means you start losing customers when people who have an expectation that their database is running 
or a business unit has an application that's critical to them and there's another application stealing all of the resources of the system, you've now pissed someone off, you've created a support problem, or in the case of a service provider, you're losing customers. That's what guaranteed performance is meant to solve. What we do is think of this system over there as a big bucket of flash. It's a big bucket of performance and capacity. Our software virtualizes that entire bucket and then allows you to provision it out to every single application. So in a heterogeneous environment, let's say databases next to applications, is that kind of what you're talking about? Yeah. You can then dial in per volume, almost think of them as t-shirt sizes. That application's an extra large. That needs 10,000 IOPS and 500 gig. That application's a medium, 400 IOPS, 30 gig. All of a sudden, that application goes from a medium to a large. You don't move that application to another system, it's simply an API call. We virtualize all of the storage resources and you can provision them out dynamically in support of the applications on an ongoing basis. You can see here, it literally is slider bars on our system. That's something that no other storage system has been able to do. Usually, if you want more performance for an application, you migrate it off of that system to a more performance system. You may pin it in cache for a certain period of time. These are usually manual exercises or require uh, downtime or data migrations. With SolidFire, it's dynamic and it's driven by APIs. It's automated. It can be automated. Graphically de depicting that scenario, on the right, you're seeing the noisy neighbor that's pissing off everybody else. He's the guy that's crushing performance system-wide for all these other little guys down below that are unhappy. That's you getting your virtual desktop environment crushed by the guy that's stealing all the resources with the database. What SolidFire allows you to do is dial in per volume exactly the resources that each system needs to make sure that problem doesn't happen. You keep everybody happy because you set an expectation around performance and ensure that volume doesn't extend outside of its boundaries. That is a critical component of an architecture in, a, in an environment where you're consolidating multiple applications into a single system. I'll go over this one quick because unless there's real data protection uh, questions in the audience, this might, uh, this might uh, go a little bit deep. Um, the point being, we've designed a system with what's called shared nothing high availability. This is meant to ensure that if there's any failures, we can easily fence off the failed process at the drive or the node level and ensure that the system still continues to work without performance impact. So, if you lose a node, for example, the data simply rebalances across all other nodes in the cluster. Think of these nodes and the drives within them as peers. They all participate in the rebuild process. You're back up recovering in matters of minutes versus hours or days. We've redesigned from scratch the data protection scheme to ensure that you don't have to endure the rebuild failures and rebuild times associated with traditional disk-based architectures and RAID-based data protection schemes. And this has been validated in carrier class, teleco, service provider, web scale environments. You can survive multi-node failures as you need to. The system just rebuilds. The bigger the cluster, the faster the rebuild times because there's more peers working. Last few components of the story and then we'll solve, ask for any questions. Um, inline efficiency. Uh, this is critical, as I mentioned earlier, to drive down the economics of flash. Flash by itself is expensive, but when you can dedupe, compress, and thin provision the data in line without impacting performance, uh, you can turn the economics of flash upside down relative to traditional disk. We can get data reduction of six to one. We have a customer getting 16 to one. I have another customer getting 60 to one data reduction. That level of data reduction allows you to store significantly more data in less space. To bring that to life, what you see on the right, uh, left here is a competitor storage system. That's a 44U uh, NetApp SAN, 173 terabytes of effective capacity. As Tim asked in the back, what's that comparably footprint-wise? That's the exact same capacity you get from that solid fire system on the right. But you're getting significantly more performance, 375,000 IOPS of performance versus 52,000 and the power and cooling benefits uh, significantly less. We have one customer who went from 96,000 watts in their footprint to 1,100 watts with solid fire. 
the, the, the power and cooling savings alone from flash and from the density enabled by the system helps justify the expenditure. When you add quality of service on top, now you can drive tons of virtual machines or applications on this platform confidently, such that you're hosting databases next to virtual disks, next to virtual machines, all from within 5U. One of our largest customers, eBay, the reason they went with solid fire is because we prevented them from building another data center. They removed cabinets of NetApp with 5U of solid fire and grew, their, grew out their infrastructure as they needed to, but did not, they did not have to build a second data center or an incremental data center as a result. So I think I have about five minutes left. I'll wrap up quickly. Um, from a management perspective, we've done everything we can to get you out of the storage management business. Storage can be a tedious experience managing SATA, different RAID pools, different types of uh, aggregates and volume groups. We've abstracted a lot of that complexity to make it extremely simple. All of our management is exposed through a UI. So those of you that like to manage your infrastructure through a UI, we have one of those with everything you would expect from a UI. If you want to automate the entire infrastructure, actually the core of what we do is API-based management. Every single management function from the system is API-based. This is really, you know, we talk about APIs as the, as the conversational currency of the next generation data center. This is the way infrastructure will communicate in the future. Storage systems need to have this functionality today. This drives integrations with your management tools, with the other vendors that you work with, with some of these different third-party platforms here. APIs are a key integration point for any system and a key management point for you and your environment. And they drive deep ecosystem integrations, which is something you should mandate, ensuring that vendors align with the tools that you're using. So you'll see here, hopefully, some familiar vendors' names. Um, at the hardware infrastructure layer at the bottom. Increasingly, customers are turning to, to tools like VMware, OpenStack, CloudStack, and others to manage their virtual uh, and cloud-based infrastructure. And then you have familiar applications across the top. Storage is a provider of resources to all of these applications. The better the integration, the better these applications run. And we invest significantly in ensuring that our system just works with these applications natively as opposed to imposing some additional integration work uh, on our customers. Last slide and then I will get out of here or open it up for questions. So we joke about this and, and use this hashtag sometimes on Twitter, not all flash is created equal. There's this perception that there's this bucket of vendors that do flash. And that's the entire competitive landscape for the future of storage. And, and I urge people to think about it, not so much in terms of the hardware, because the hardware is a, is, a, is a transitional step in terms of innovation. But think about it in terms of the workloads. Think about it in terms of your use cases. If you are building shared infrastructure, if you're getting out of siloed infrastructure, moving to shared infrastructure, if you're expanding and growing your IT rapidly, if you're looking to be more dynamic, more scalable, more automated, more agile, Flash is not going to be what's going to, what will get you there. It's the higher level features and functions. And so when you're talking about storage for your next generation data center designs, look beyond just the Flash, because the Flash will lead you down a, a transitory path. There's, there's, there's higher order benefits from things like inline data reduction, shared nothing high availability, scale, automation, management, et cetera that will differentiate the different flash vendors that you will come across as you're evaluating storage. So with that, I think, I think I've taken up my time. Although I think we've lost, did we lose Phil? Oh, no, that's your question. Oh, okay. That was quick, covered a lot. You guys were taller. So the objective would be to continue to execute and keep the arrows moving up to the right. Um, you know, that, that goal is hard to predict, but you know, hopefully it's 18, 18, 24 months. But the market's moving fast. I think there's a, it's a positive conversation. What about data security? So security is something that's, that's absolutely important to us. So we, we'll do things like encryption at rest uh, at the drive level, but we'll also partner, you know, we don't, we don't pretend to try and do everything throughout the stack. And so from a security's perspective, um, the good news about our APIs is we can integrate with any of the tools that you may use from a monitoring or security perspective 
and expose all of the activity and functionality of the system into those frameworks. So we'll look to complement whatever security systems or tools you have in place. We'll also do things to make sure that the, the data is completely anonymous from a system level um, to the extent that we can control it um, in our infrastructure. Yep. It's all commodity hardware. Yeah. Designed for rapid deployment in standard rack space. You could buy everything you see here hardware wise on Dell.com. It's iSCSI uh, network as well. Any other architecture we have in the community that supports or needs to be aware of some of the system all side day recovery? Yeah, so I'll, uh, I'll finish up. I mean, thank you very much. Uh, I'll be around afterwards for questions. Um, SolidFire as a company, I think, has uh, established our roots in, in service providers. Uh, we came out of that market. That's what this architecture was designed for. The interesting thing, though, is we've been pulled into the enterprise market. Um, customers demanding cloud economics, cloud agility inside their data center. Their conversations with us say, I'm not a service provider, but I run my IT department like one. And I want all of the goodness that you guys are providing service providers today inside our data center. And in fact, I'd argue we've been pulled into the enterprise to web scale to SaaS type businesses faster than we would have expected because of that dynamic that we alluded to at the front end of the deck. So uh, we went quick, a lot of coverage here, but there's a bunch of SolidFire guys here to help answer questions and, and uh, afterwards. So thank you very much for having us.